Welcome to Rauda's Opinion Videos. Today I will uh, talk to you a little bit, a uh, little bit about metal books, metal biographies, to be precise. And why so? Well, recently I just finished reading, uh, sentenced the Finnish metal band, metal band uh, biography written by Matti Riekki, the editor in chief of Inferno magazine Finland and I must say it was a great book yet totally different type of some of the other books I've previously been reading you know related to bands and such so I will talk a little bit about the book in question but also uh, metal books in uh, in general and what is the basic problem with them or rather the, the surrounding thing but first things first, today's beer is sponsored by Laitilan Virvoitusjuoma Tehdas. This is Neipa New England IPA. Uh, I think this was already featured in our Arc Goat uh, interview. So um, you probably noticed our uh, takes on the taste if you managed to see that interview. I can tell you this is some nice tasting uh, unfiltered uh, old school uh, India Pale Ale variation which I can strongly recommend you uh, foaming a little bit so I'll let it go down a bit before tasting it again that is. So this is the book in question uh, I mentioned there in the introduction part as you can see Matti Riekki and there is a sentenced famous sentenced logo, the S. This is uh, Delta Boyosen, which means uh, north from here. Uh, the uh, sophomore sentenced albums, story of sentenced. As you can see, this um, pocketbook is uh, written in Finnish. And that's actually one of the things which I wanted to uh, talk about today. But first, let's take a look on this book. As you can see, this is a uh, kind of a pocket book, uh, soft cover, and not much pictures because it's a biography thing. So obviously, not not that many uh, pictures needed. There are some to uh, give you a little insight of the band, how they looked like back in their back in the days during their career. As you all probably know, uh, sentenced was already buried a few years ago and uh, this is actually sort of a sad story no spoilers here and in towards the end we have more pictures about the band but the rest of the stuff is just text some um, 250 pages i guess approximately 200 uh, 260 pages all in all in a nice pocket book format and nicely written also now why i started to, to talk about or wanted to talk about the um, metal band biographies for a couple of reasons first of all i liked the book uh, which i read in many many different parts kind of like filling the gaps when i had nothing else to do just but wait and i must say it was a kind of a kind of an interesting story Never been a big sentenced fan, except for the brief moment with Amok and um, uh, the EP Trooper and the uh, North From Here e uh, album. But I still wanted to read about this very, very Finnish metal band. Obviously, I, I have known the band for, you know, past 25 years or so. But because I've been reading other band uh, books, biopics, uh, not biopics, but biographies, uh, Right, this one, this kind of was kind of like no-brainer, especially when I got it as a gift from a friend. And it was well written. It was more informative, less of a party book uh, than some other bands, namely Metal Cruise, The Dirt, or Marilyn Manson Story, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Biography, uh, Let Me Kill Mister, and all, all, all those others. Um, which are more, you know, having about fun, going through this kind of a life full of entertainment, doing gigs, uh, doing drugs, banging groovies and all that stuff. 
Um, this was totally different, more like foot on the, you know, foot firmly on the ground, very um, kind of a more realistic to uh, relate to this kind of story. It's also a sad story, considering uh, what happened after the band kind of split up. And also, there's kind of like this layer of melancholy covering the whole story. It was like this band was never having fun as such. Surely they enjoyed, you know, creating their music, writing songs, having those topics of death, suicide, suffering and whatnot throughout the years. But still, they were basically just, you know, average, you know, Finnish guys creating music and, you know, just going on with their life or lives. And as such, this is a very, very different kind of a story, more like a reading a kind of history book rather than, you know, book full of partying, what was basically Mertley Crew book full of, well, there's some tragedies there also, which we should not, you know, forget, but still very, very different tone. Same applies to the Aussie book, mostly about having fun and keeping oneself entertained and all that stuff. But, well, when deaths are part of the story, it is kind of a tragic, always. So, um, clearly a book that I would like to, you to uh, recommend to read, but there is one problem. Uh, this book is only available in Finnish. Now, obviously, Sentenced is more a Finnish band than anything else, and as such, it's not a big metal band, you know, for foreigners as such. But then again, it also uh, enjoyed uh, some level of success, and not minor one, I might add, in countries like Germany. Now, the big question is why this book was never translated. And this brings us to the very first uh, problem that is very much related to metal biographies. Now, commercial break. Oh, just kidding. Just having a sip here. Mmm. Strong, citrus-like taste. So the first problem is obviously money. Now, Sentenced is not as big bad, obviously, as Metal Crew, Motorhead, uh, or, you know, Marilyn Manson and all that stuff. And what we have those there in common is, obviously, that all these bands are not exactly metal bands. Not Marilyn Manson, not Metal Crew, obviously, and all that stuff. We have a few stories like Nightwish, uh, written about Finnish metal bands, but then again, Nightwish is also a relatively big band, being a metal band anyway. And uh, there are only a few bands that can be made into movies or big books. Surely Bruce Dickinson had, you know, uh, paved his way with Iron Maiden and his solo career, so obviously he has his solo book. So does have bands like, um, or so do bands like Slayer and Anthrax, but they're not kind of the same. I've read the Slayer book a few years ago, and to be honest, while it was kind of interesting for a fan point of view to read it, it is not like even close to the same level of books as the ones that I mentioned here. And the smaller ones, they don't have this kind of a budget. Sentence was probably possible only because it's kind of like uh, a Finnish band made by a Finnish guy, person, you know, already an author, and uh, as such it probably has enough uh, audience in Finland. But what about the rest of the world? Uh, I was sad to hear when I was talking to the author of the book, Matti Riekki, that would it be possible uh, to have English version of the book because I told him that I was going to kind of do a sort of a review uh, of, of his book and he was said that it's not available. It might be someday, but for the time being, it seems like nothing is happening. We'll have to wait and see. It's not like fully decided. The books are not closed, figuratively speaking, but it seems like nothing is cer more certain than uncertainty. And as I find it kind of a sad thing. Now, Obviously, most metalheads, what I know, including me, is that we don't read much books. For example, I read mostly magazines, 
fan signs and all that stuff. Uh, but when I read book, I actually go to uh, biographies, autobiographies or not, doesn't really matter. I find them very, very entertaining, informative and all that stuff. More than fictional books anyway. For example, outside music that is, I was reading Jenna Jameson, the famous porn star uh, biography. And it was very really interesting. By the way, also written by the same Rolling Stone, Stone journalist slash author. Uh, Neil Strauss, who was also, you know, writing the Mertley Crew book and uh, Marilyn Manson book. So with his kind of talent and name and all that attached, maybe it's easier. Obviously, it's easier when you are an American band and you have big success and all that stuff. But when we're talking about smaller names, especially like real metal bands, which are not that big and the metal audience is not reading that much, then we find this problem. And I kind of find it sad. The same applies to whole metal journalism in, in general. Because the thing is, people are not willing to pay. So every, everything is just, you know, uh, kind of expected to happen for free. And if there is no paying customers, if there is no audience that is just willing, like, take my money, I want to read the story. There is no journalism. There is no biographies. Unless you're big enough and when there is, you know, you know, the critical mass that kind of makes all these stories possible. And I kind of find it sad because there are lots of interesting stories with metal bands. You don't have to be Iron Maiden or Metallica size. You can pre be way smaller and yet still have an interesting story, like Sentenced has over here. It, like I said, it's totally different kind and it's not written from the kind of entertainment point of view or aspect. But that doesn't, you know, remove any any of the interest here, what I'm talking about. So metal books are obviously very problematic. I mean, we have strong fanzine culture, be it black metal, dead metal, or any even more obscure style. And even though we don't have this kind of a strong journalism around more extreme metal, in metal in general, talking about big and small names, doesn't matter, we have metal magazines worldwide, we have metal medias, well, Rauta is being one in a way, but it seems like a critical mass is not willing to spend. I'm not blaming any of you, that. that's not my point here, but that kind of creates this, you know, uh, vicious circle, since metal books or zines or, you know, magazine, magazines, they are not selling enough, uh, there is no funding for these kind of books or whatever level of journalism and as such these authors these writers they are not paid they are not you know like hey would you like to uh, you know write a story about i don't know in bel nazarene or i don't know uh some uh dog throne you know so unless you're a really really big band and you have a kind of a compelling story to be told it's not not like anything is happening and in this sense, metal people can actually blame a little bit, you know, on themselves. Like I said, we have this kind of strong fanzine culture being since, I don't know, 80s. And, you know, small group of devoted people are actually buying these zines and, you know, going to underground gigs. They keep the kind of a flame burning. They keep these bands, you know, touring, doing albums and whatnot. But if we need to take the step to the next level, so to speak, that is, have books or, I don't know, documentaries with of quality, it's kind of impossible. Writing a book uh, is a huge load of work. I could not personally imagine taking a such task to be done. I, I, I know I'm a kind of a skilled writer. I'm, I can say that much about myself because... After all, I've been doing writing for, you know, living in a way, not, you know, doing books, but anyway. But still, you know, dedicating a big part of my life, for example, to write a metal book, when there's barely no audience, and that would demand uh, hundreds of hours of, you know, interviews and probably emails and whatnot. That's a great, great task to be done. And that there are expenses that need to be covered, you know, just, you know, to pay the bills. So it's kind of a difficult situation between a stone and a hard place. We kind of have this demand for this book, but we don't have the audience. And even if we have those books, 
Would somebody be willing to take the risk and publish them or even translate? Now we have that Nightwish book out there and translated as well. But for example, bands like Sentenced, it's different level of the different size and whatnot. And obviously the difference is the other band is still going on and touring and doing albums and the other band is just like finished and buried. And then there are like bands like Amorphis, which are also active, but they are not that big. So obviously there is kind of a problem with whatever. You either have this really small underground level of activity, uh, or then you have to be really big. Everything in between is just not worshipped. Uh, or it, is it worshipped just, you know, not with the critical mass that is needed? My point is, eventually, that these books are needed. They are as much uh, part of our culture as are those uh, albums or live events, uh, Zion interviews and whatnot. But these books are not possible if people are not, you know, once again, putting their money where their mouth is. So what I would do uh, to suggest, what I would recommend you people out there, go grab a book. If it's music, or even male music related, all the better, because with that way, either you're borrowing that from your local library, or you are, you know, way, uh, putting a few bucks, euros, or whatever, to get this kind of a book, you know, soft cover, paperback, whatever. I mean, you are not only doing a service for yourself and getting a grasp of an interesting story, but you're also doing a favor for the whole, shall I say, male community. You are not only getting yourself informed about and learning about metal culture, you're actually enabling everything here to happen. Reading is good for you as much as any other form of art. I'm not just saying that reading books is better than watching a movie or playing a video game or whatever, just everything is good when it's informative, when it gives you a learning thing. But it's not like these smaller bands are gonna get into movies if they're not getting even into a book. So people, I encourage read, if it's sign or book doesn't matter, but read and uh, get enlightened, so to speak. These are my opinions. Are there any good books you would like to recommend to me or the other people on the channel which are worth our time, which are good stories or otherwise. Looking forward to your comments and meanwhile you're pondering your text, how about have yourself a good beer. This is one good goddamn good candidate for your drinking pleasure. Until the next time, see you soon and bye bye.